And ups now for Boston University, a little bit of a change in goal tonight. It's Alex Gady, the transfer from Johns Hopkins. We are underway here at BU. 7.02 is the time of the game. It's a 57 degree sunny day here in Boston. Mike, will we'll talk a little bit about uh, the, the lineups and the folks that you see out here to start. But again, Alex Ganey in goal for BU, wearing number 49 tonight, his first start as a Terrier. Yes, the Johns Hopkins transfer. In the entire nation. We'll get into some of the statistics a little bit more as the game goes on. BU in the white uniforms with the red shorts and the red letters. A broadcaster's dream, to be quite honest with you, and away we go. And going back to our player of the watch, Roy Meyer getting the first turnover of the game here for the Terriers to nullify the first chance on offense for Brown. BU going to work. Here's Qu Christian Quadrino, the freshman from Holbrook, New York. And they find the back of the net early, only a couple of minutes into this one. And not only gets his first collegiate goal, but has the Terriers up one to nothing. There's Quadrino working on the X, trying to beat Riley Stewart, the midfielder. And now over to Matt Hilburn. Mishandled pass, and it gets away from Perfetto. Here come the Brown Bears now. Yeah, a bit of a tough pass, unforced error by Tommy Bork that time, trying to find Perfetto alone at the X, but just bounces up towards him. Too tough for Perfetto to handle, and so a missed opportunity once again there for the Terriers. BU, as we mentioned, six and three, and this is where they get really dangerous now in the ride. And the shot on goal, taking advantage of an empty net there is Luke McPleets, the clear. But Brown, as we were describing before that shot, 14 to 13 win over the defending national champion, Virginia. And for those lacrosse aficionados tuning in tonight, Lars Stephanie, the head coach of Virginia, built the program at Brown essentially, and then was able to, or Brown was able to score an upset. And a nice save from Phil Goss as he scoops it off the ground. You wonder how offensive this game is going to be here tonight, Jake. Again, we've talked about Goss and his abilities in between the pipes for the Bears, and we've spoken already about this Brown, rather, ooh, excuse me. Coast to on. coast. <laughs> oh, goodness. Coast <laughs> to coast is Ryan Ogavin. The for once more. A little bit of struggles early this uh, so far this game, Mike, is as BU's having a, a little bit of trouble clearing and riding again. Well, Ganey with the quick outlet pass, trying to find the freshman John Marshall, but a little bit off the mark and couldn't be collected cleanly there by Marshall. So right back on offense, go the Bears. First quarter, halfway over. Bears with a one goal lead. Working is George Grell. Looks like it was a roll dodge there. He's able to put it on net, but just wide of Ganey. Yeah, sneaky shot there on the backhand as Grell tried to see if he could sneak that by Gain if he was napping between the pipes, but no Darian matter. Cook, my goodness, coming around from all the way behind the net at the X. Scores, puts it past Ganey, his first. Three to one, and now we get a timeout. Ryan Poli going to talk it over with the Terriers. Brown leads 3-1. Here between two teams that are just a state apart. Two teams that are a state apart and that have quite a bit of similarities in the way that they've rose to where they are, as we'll talk about the head coaches, Ryan Poli and, and Mike Daly, a little bit later. But great experiences among them, both relatively new to the Division I Northeast head coaching scene if you will, as the shot goes wide for Brown. 6.19 left to go here in the first. Brown has a two-goal advantage early. Darian Cook working on the defense now. Beautiful roll dodge shot is high and, and right of Alex Gady. Well, we've always seen Ryan Ogden score with that hellacious shot from the outside. As he rolled to his left, went back across the grain, just not on target that time. It was a behind the back pass from Luke McCaleb, the shot, and a score. Looks like that was George Grell. Away goes BU, and of course, we've mentioned the terms clearing and riding. Clearing is essentially getting it over in transition on offense, which BU just failed to do there. Riding, simply the defense. Yeah, a bit of a tennis match here at midfield. Neither team really wants to get possession. Finally, it's Quadrino to handle that pass cleanly for the first time in a couple attempts, and he will slow things down accordingly. And I, 
Be interesting to see how this offense flows against Timmy Lay missing his third straight game, leading goal scorer here for the Terriers, and Vince D'Alto when the Terriers without his services against Utah. The Terrier offense really failed to really struggle to find its flow and get consistent quality chances in on net. So without D'Alto in the lineup here today, let's see how this offense hums for the Terriers. Yeah, Vince D'Alto, the sophomore, as we get a goal from BU. This time, it is Matt Bogger. And so while Ganey has picked up his game in terms of the saves he's been making in the second quarter, some of those outlets and some of those clear passes have still been a little bit iffy. Defense still warming up to and getting their feet wet, if you will. It's about eight and a half minutes left to go here in the second quarter. 4-2, Brown leads. Here's Ogovin. Big shot from Brown. It was Reed Machete, the junior from Potomac, Maryland. And backed up nicely again that time by McCaleb. We really haven't mentioned McCaleb so far in the second quarter after he scored a very nice goal in the first. So the defense has maybe shifted their focus to, to the top gunners because McCaleb, oh. That one finds pay dirt. It's Nolan Rockefeller, the junior. For, there's only a couple of seconds to get it over the clear line here. He'll find Nolan Rockefeller. Looked like the pass was intended for George Pike. Darian Cook was there to grab it, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, deflected away there by the BU defense that time. So it won't create a new shot clock, but it will keep the ball here with the Bears. Here's a shot of Darian Cook, the junior from Redding, Connecticut. And now McCaleb in the X. He's being defended now by Charlie Hines. About seven minutes left to go. Brown still retains a three-goal advantage. Right past the defense and past Ganey, and it's Rockefeller again, two in a row for the junior. Make it six to two. We will take a break. Ryan Poley trying to figure out what we've seen so far. He's been playing in, in sort of a midfield flex position, maybe an attack at some points as you saw there, but nonetheless, athleticism running deep in this BU bench. I'd like to see Quadrino. He's got that quickness, that good first step to try and get by the fence and maybe find a lane towards the net. It hasn't been available there for Quadrino and the rest of this offense. Big hit for Brown there. And it was Andrew Geppert that came out, was all over Anthony Forziani and a shot clock violation for BU there. Great defensive standoff from Brown, Mike. Yeah, I've been impressed. I think we were wondering how this offense would click for the Bears, but I've been really Impressed by the defense. Beautiful shot there. Excellent display of awareness, and it's Devin McLean. That will hurt Niedringhaus. With Wolfram draped all over him, the shot from Jama right at the head of Phil Goss, and an easy spear for him. Yeah, everything BU has tried long distance here on Goss has been saved there by the goalkeeper. So if they're going to beat this three-time All-American, they're going to need to get in tight. And so far, Brown defense has not allowed access to the goal mouth for the most part in this game. 35 seconds now. Brown trying to make it a six-goal game in their first since March 8th, 2020, in which they knocked off the number eight Virginia Cavaliers. They beat the man that built the Brown program in Lars Tiffany. 20 seconds left to go. Here comes Yeboah Cody. Now McCaleb. George Grell. He knew that one was going in. He finds the back of the net again. So here come the Bears in the clear attempt. Easiness there. Coast to coast firing away is Riley Stewart, but it just gets wide of the goalkeeper, Gady. So Brown's going to reclaim possession here, and they will take it nice and slow. There's no sense of urgency for the Brown Bears. Here comes Reed Machete now. Swims a defender. Beautiful goal for the Brown Bears. And how about it? Luke McCaleb, 100 career goals off a great pass from Reed Machete. So the senior able to make it to the Century Club, the 14th player to do so here in Brown Bears history. So congratulations to Luke McCaleb. 
So here come the Brown Bears again. They've really controlled in every way of the game so far. As now it's Colby Gendron. The bounce shot. Gainey gets a stick on it. And they'll reset the shot clock here. Give Alex Gainey another save. Well, again, also wonder whether Coach Daly will now start to dip into his bench a little bit because we've really seen the top players out there for the Bears for the duration of this game thus far. Gendron again. He goes top shelf on Gainey. He burns him to his left. Make it 10 to two for the Brown Bears in the third quarter. Most of the shots from towards the perimeter of the box have been easily saved by Goss, but that was a quick shot from a different angle that looked like it fooled Goss coming towards the net. Summeriner from Perfetto goes high. It'll still be retained by BU as James Corcoran, the freshman, is the closest to the ball when it went out. And now it's time to start testing Goss. What do you have to lose? It's 10 to two here for the Bears. And it looks like a push out there offensively that time. So not a great foul taken at a bad time there by James Corcoran. Heard an interesting analogy this past week, Mike. Lacrosse is very similar to the sport of basketball in many ways. You have the picks, you have the, the offensive players moving constantly. Did that sneak in? Oh, what a goal from Brown. It was Riley Stewart. A team that hasn't played in this long. They look polished. They look synced up. And they look ready to go, most importantly, against a good BU team. Well, that's all means. <laughs> that's the thing about 411 games between days. I mean, days between games, <laughs> excuse me, close enough, is that you have a lot of time to practice. <laughs> so that's for sure. That's all they've been doing over the last call year and a half is preparing, practicing, getting things cleaned up looking polished, and so finally able to step out on the field. Well, they look like a finished product right now. And even if it's not in a formalized team setting, which the Ivy League didn't have the luxury of doing for most of this year, the guy's still working, if you ask this, these coaches. What a beautiful goal from Darian Cook as he goes behind the back. And so now a double-digit lead here for the Bears with 127 to go in the third. As it was Luke McHale that didn't even realize the ball wasn't even his cross. And now Roy Meyer, quadruple team there in midfield, but he's able to find an open man. Some glimpse of positivity from BU, and that's really all you can ask for if you're Ryan Poley at this point. With a date in the playoffs awaiting in a couple of weeks. It will be May 4th as the shot goes wide of Phil Goss. He doesn't have the opportunity to put a stick on it. May 4th will be the Patriot League quarterfinals. And BU will be the number two seed. Absolutely trucking a defender is Jason Child. And it finds the back of the net. BU gets their third of the day. So I wondered whether we were going to see Ganey give way to one of the other goaltenders on the roster here today, perhaps Max Gomez. But it looks like Ryan Poley will stick with the junior for perhaps a duration. Winding up and shooting is Donnie Howard, the sophomore. And it goes off the knee of Phil Goss. Terriers sprinting to make a line change. And they'll get their proper personnel out and reset with a reset shot clock. April brought some lesser fortunes for BU to, to close the book on that. Utah was an 11-10 double overtime loss here at Dickerson Field. A win at Colgate in New York and a loss also in New York at Army. And there's Matt Balger again after six minutes and 35 seconds on it. And you see on your screen on ESPN plus 80 seconds with a full shot clock and now a 30 second penalty. It'll be Nolan Rockefeller getting rung up for Brown. Perfetto. Now Balger, the Brown bench on their feet again, making all the noise they can. Shot a point blank and score. It's Jet Jama, the junior, to his career total. And now only 15 saves left. If Brown does play again, he might have the opportunity to become the all-time program saves leader.
Clock running out. Brown, 1 and 0. Oh. 411 days since their last contest. And they come into Nickerson Field to defeat the Boston University Terriers by way of a 12 to 5 performance. We'll call it a two game winning streak here for the Brown Bears, but 411 days between those two wins.